So Rakas uh, Sheikh is currently a CESA graduate in general pediatrics. He's recently done his CESA and been successful. He's currently starting his post CCT fellowship in neurology in Manchester and previously was working in the NHS in capacities of associate specialist and locum consultant in pediatrics. I'm sure there's a lot more about his experience that he will share with you, but I'll leave that to him so he can tell you a bit more about his journey. So I'll now hand over to Dr. Rakash Sheikh to introduce himself and his talk. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you, Jess. Um, okay, so I'll start with sharing uh, my slides. Um, okay, so is it is that visible to all? Yeah, they look good. And it's moving, yes? Yeah, yeah, moving. Okay, thank you very much, Soft Landing team. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Rakas, and thank you very much for coming to this webinar. This is actually in continuation with our previous session, which we did uh, in um, June, uh, where we covered most of the basic stuff. So originally it was planned to be done in August, but then we had an announcement that um, there will be some changes by the GMC and the college. So we thought that we'll postpone it until we get to know more. So here we are today. Uh, so let's quickly re recap what we have discussed uh, previously. Uh, I know most of you have attended that webinar as well, but if you have not, there's a link which uh, we can post in the chat box. So uh, we covered most of the basics. Uh, what is uh, the CESAR process? What is the eligibility? Uh, what resources do you need? Uh, what support you need from your trust? The type of the evidence, the quantity, quality. Uh, and we discussed a lot of uh, basic questions. Whereas today we are uh, covering most of the practical aspects because um, I think there's, there's lots of uh, webinars and um, presentations going on and you already know the basic stuff. So we'll be discussing uh, more practical things that how, like how to start your application, um, upload your evidence, how to anonymize your evidence, how to fine tune your application, the process of uh, verification and the verifiers, how do you compile and group your evidence into files and um, something about the referees. And finally, I'll try to answer your questions and give you try to give you some tips. So uh, Jazz has already uh, introduced me. Uh, some of you may already know me. Uh, my name is Dr. Vakas. Uh, I won't take much time on my introduction. It's just because some of you may be in my similar situation. So uh, it may help you out. So um, most of my pediatric career has been out of the UK. I graduated uh, from Lahore, Pakistan. Uh, and I did my post graduation or CCT also from Pakistan, which is called FCPS. Then I worked in uh, neonatology in the Middle East for uh, three years before coming to the NHS England. So I've been working in NHS for the last five years in the capacities of associate specialist and locum consultant. Uh, before I came to UK, I didn't have much. I'm, I'm not a very uh, well you know, very organized person, a hard, uh, hard working person. So I did all my exams, membership, fellowship after coming to the UK. The reason to explain all this is that this process, which we are going to talk about, although is very complicated, but it is doable. If I can do that, everyone can do that. All right. So a quick, quick some words about changes in the pathway. Actually, um, there's not much change apart from uh, the nomenclature. Uh, the GMC has announced that they are going to change the pathway from 30th November onwards. It would be called portfolio pathway and they will be checking your knowledge and skills and experience. The recency of the evidence remains same, uh, which is five years. The They call uh, the domains, there's a new name now, which is a high level learning outcome. Uh, for the purpose of discussion today, pardon me if I use the same terms because I'm used to them. So the process is basically the same, or although they say that the assessment will be a bit flexible, the process of uh, collection, compilation, and submission of evidence essentially remains the same. But please be uh, 
familiar with the latest um, specialty specific guidance and the user guide, which is uh, available on the uh, GMC website. So step one, step one, if you have not done already is to start your application. So um, even uh, if you think you are not fully ready, uh, why I'm saying this, uh, because when you start your application, you get to know the answer to a lot of the questions which are circulating in your mind and you will not get to know them until you start your application. Uh, it makes you familiar with the competencies which you need to provide the evidence against. Don't uh, don't worry about the expiry. It is expiry of uh, one year and you still have to um, um you, you don't have to pay unless you submit your applications it also helps to keep you motivated um you know like uh, uh, a morning alarm which you set up um so which snoozes every few minutes and it keeps bugging you until you wake up so if you don't set up the alarm or don't start at the application you may end up in sleeping all day okay so Next step is to organize your evidence. So all of us now are in an advanced stage. Uh, we know the process, we know what to do, we know what they want, uh, and we have most of the evidence. It's just that it's uh, uh, not present in a single uh, cupboard or a catalog. So it, it's dispersed every, everywhere. So the in, in second step is to organize your evidence. The first thing you need to do is go to your portfolio, Kaizen or whatever you are using, download the PDF of all the files, all the work-based assessments, uh, then go to your uh, appraisal portal, which, sorry, drop my earpiece. Then go to your, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, so go to your appraisal portal. Some trusts do the online appraisals and some of them do um, a manual form. So whatever is the uh, your trust does. So uh, download the PDF of all the input and output forms of the appraisals from the last five years. So that is very important and it's a good piece of evidence. It makes good number of pages. Then explore all the CPD certificates. You have done all the courses, APLS, NLS, safeguarding, other courses which you have done, the posters and publications you must have done. You must have presented teaching in your department and have uh, obtained feedback for that. Explore your emails because there's a, sometimes there's a lot, uh, there's a, is a very significant important information in your email uh, about the correspondences of um, uh, you know, some service improvement and uh, uh, rota related things and other queries. Your secretary will be very helpful uh, in giving you the records of the meetings which you have attended or you have led. So when you do all this, it will look like this. Uh, so... So this is my drive, which is showing all the folders of evidence which I have collected. Uh, you can see that. So it will help you making aware of what you have and what you need more. So, you know, all you can make 11 or 12 folders depending on the domains and put the miscellaneous things in another folder so that you, you'll keep that in hand. OK, so the next three slides are very important. Please pay attention. Uh, I used them in the previous session as well. So you know the type of evidence. There are two types of evidence. One's for which you need the portfolio and the other which for which you don't need the portfolio. So the portfolio will be required for all your work-based assessments, CBD, ACATS, HAT, DOPS, DOC, safeguarding CBD. I don't think we need to discuss that. It's a very basic stuff and we, we have discussed that uh, previously. So you can easily download the PDFs of all these work-based assessments which you have done and import them in your drive, which is showing, uh, which I just showed you. And then you have uh, uh, the type of evidence for which you don't need a portfolio. Uh, and there is a, a lot of stuff which for which you don't need a portfolio. So you, as I said, your appraisal output forms, the 
revalidation, lock your clinic letters, transfer letters, safeguarding reports, which you have done. You must have done teachings and presentations in your department. Uh, uh, you need to obtain feedback for that. Then CPDs, everybody does courses, your experience certificates, audit, QIPs, publications, lots of things you can do without using the portfolio. This is a very important figure which GMC has um, published in their guidance. It's, it's, it remains the same as it was before. So it says that uh, you need to maintain a proportion. So you need to maintain a balance. So you cannot compensate in an area which you are deficient in by providing an extra amount of evidence in an other area. So you need to maintain a balance in all these domains. So if you see these numbers, it's not entered by the GMC. I have entered them, it's just for an example. So the guidance says most of the successful applications, they upload uh, around 150 files, 150 uploads approximately. And if you calculate the breakdown of that, so you will see that roughly you need uh, 25 uploads each in domain two, three, and four, 12 to 13 uploads each in domain one, six, and 10, and eight, seven to eight uploads uh, in domain uh, five, seven, eight, nine, and 11. So that is very important. Uh, and uh, please note that I'm using the word of upload. So upload means files, not the pages. So 150 uploads uh, does not mean 150 pages because some fi files could be short as just one page as a certificate, some may be long as your research article or appraisal output forms. So uh, it's just about the balance of different domains you put your evidence in. Okay, next. Um, so, um, so we'll start with the, uh, we'll talk about uh, anonymization, which is very important because GM, both GMC and college says that you have to maintain the patient confidentiality. So a lot of uh, candidates, uh, friends ask me this question about uh, anonymization in the WhatsApp group. So here's the guidance by the GMC. You need to redact all the patient identifiable data, uh, all names, nicknames, addresses, contact details, the barcodes, registration number, NHS number, both of the patient and their family. Uh, you need you also need to redact the details of the colleagues you have assessed or provided a feedback for, or if you are assessing them, uh, investigating for a complaint. So there's a you need to be very familiar with the guidance. Other uh, uh, important things are the anonymization or the reduction must be permanent. So they cannot be reversible or can be removed by any, any other software. Uh, it is, uh, so keep in mind the um, time concentration because it's a very time, it's a time, quite a time taking process. So one, so if you have to anonymize one letter or safeguarding reports, uh, especially because it has a lots of pages and there's a lots of characters in a report uh, which you have to anonymize and redact. So uh, keep take the account of uh, uh, that time as well in your uh, 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 application process. So uh, the next thing which a lot of people ask is the editing software or you if you can do it manually. Uh, I I mean. You can theoretically do it with manual, manually by using a crayon or something and then scan it and upload it. But that's, I, I cannot imagine that that will take lots of time. So uh, Adobe uh, is, uh, is a very user-friendly software. I have used it for myself and there are lots of other software as well. It's um, You can subscribe it for a couple of months and then when you have redacted all your data, then you can stop your subscription. Uh, you can get support from your uh, workplace, uh, such as your secretaries or IT colleagues. Sometimes they are able to help. Then uh, grouping and compilation of your evidence, that again is very important uh, because uh, the guidance says that you have to group similar evidence into one file and you don't duplicate your data uh, into multiple domains and don't present it multiple times. So you can group similar files such as uh, similar uh, uh, docs, letters, skills, 
uh, uh, you don't duplicate it. Um, um, when you start the application, you will see that there is a summary box at the end of each domain where you can write that this evidence which I have provided can also be cross-linked to that other domain. For example, if you have written a clinic letter, you can write that this can be also used for communication. But don't uh, upload one file twice. Again, you can use the softwares to uh, group the data. That is very easy to do. I'll show you a few examples. So uh, here is what your application will look like when you upload uh, uh, your files in or group your files into a single file. Uh, this is the domain three of procedures. So see how I have grouped similar procedures into one file, like uh, the first one is saying 12 endotracheal tubes at one hospital, three ETTs at one hospital, uh, for four pick line insertions at King Hamad Hospital, four lumbar punctures at Darlington, seven lumbar punctures at King Hamad Hospital. So you, you uh, group similar files, which you have done at one workplace or which are similar into one file and that will, uh, uh, and then upload it. Uh, similarly uh, for leadership, uh, as I've grouped four ACARs in one file, which were done at for a similar purpose as working as a consultant of the week, mm -hmm. Then I have grouped together four uh, excellence reports together into one file. So three developmental logs and reflections. So that, that way, so this is this is just an example of how you group your uh, multiple files into one file before uploading. If you do it separately, there's a high chances that GMC will return that and it will just delay your application. So this is how your application will look like after uploading all your evidence. Um, this is just a one page. It, there are several pages. This is one of the several pages. So it will show you a list and then you can uh, just roughly calculate the proportion uh, of how much evidence should be in each domain of it, according to the diagram, which I have showed you uh, in the previous slides. So we'll go uh, through all the domains one by one and I'll try to give you some examples, uh, which I'm sure you already have or you can make up for that if you want, if you don't have enough. So uh, domain one or higher learning outcome one is the uh, professional knowledge and values, which un uh, assesses your uh, understanding of the current legislation. And uh, so uh, the evidence they suggest is to give um, your um, CPD records, training certificates, uh, your responses to complaints and appraisals and revalidation and evidence of independent practice. So there's lots of ways you can give uh, evidence of independent practice. So for example, I have uploaded, so I'm just showing a few examples, not all of that, obviously I cannot do that. So one example of independent practice is a clinic which you have done um in your own name so just redact the other details and don't no patient details should be there then there's a certificate which which i have uploaded uh, for collaborative leadership then there's just one of page of my appraisal uh, output form but you can upload the whole file it will give the volume and bulk to the file Domain two is the communication, uh, which as indicated by the name is the uh, assessment of your skill of uh, uh, your communication, both written, verbal. Uh, so the evidence they suggest is um, uh, the clinic letters you do, the safeguarding reports, the transfer letter, discharge letters, referral letters, Badger letters, there's lots of uh, things you can do for show you for communication and their work-based assessment includes the discussion of correspondence and handover assessment tools. So we all do that in our everyday practice. So this is just an example. If you see uh, on the left side is the start of the letter and on the right side is the end of the letter. So I did not put the uh, main body of the letters, which is just uh, an example of uh, communication to another specialty for a patient in which you have to show your communication skills. And on the right side, I have sent a, a talk assessment related to a safeguarding report to one of the consultant colleague who has provided me a feedback. So 
uh, a lot of things you can use for uh, uh, domain two. Okay, domain three. So, which is procedure. Uh, again, I, I'm sure we all have done all this. There is not a very long list of uh, procedures. You need to give a valid certificate of your APLS and NLS. Uh, then uh, you need to have few DOPS, uh, direct observation of skills, especially for the mandatory procedures. Be familiar with the guidance. I have just uh, up shown here an example of a procedure which I've done outside the UK. Um, it, this is just for an example purpose of a pick line, which is not a mandatory procedure, but just to show you how you can upload uh, uh, the record of your procedure, especially if it's, if you want to take it from the previous workplace. Domain four is straightforward. It is a patient management. So there's a lots of stuff. Uh, you can show your evidence for patient management. Uh, uh, all your workplace assessment has CBDs, leader CBD, mini uh, a cat handover assessment tool, your clinical let clinic letters, your medical reports, uh, patient notes. You can take uh, the screenshots of. Uh, you can use the email correspondence communication. Sometime if you are discussing with an other specialist about a patient, um, so that will show your uh, patient management thing. The uh, skills. Then comes health promotion and illness prevention. So that's the most uh, uh, common. Uh, so that's you know the 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 uh, most uh, asked domain which I ask uh, which I'm asked uh, for uh, advice because we don't have much uh, evidence for that. So it's basically assesses your knowledge, your understanding of the socioeconomic factors uh, which affect the health and well-being of the children and young people. And um, you can use uh, uh, a lot of things which you do in your everyday practice uh, for health promotion. Uh, you can use your clinic letters in which you are communicating to the families or uh, your patient notes where you have promoted breastfeeding. Uh, immunization, vaccination, if you have given a smoking advice in a patient with chronic asthma, I'm sure you see that a lot. Uh, hand hygiene, uh, infection control, wearing a mask, uh, social distancing. We had a lot of this recently in the panda during the pandemic. Uh, sleep hygiene, lifestyle modification, exercise, dietary avoid, uh, advice, preventing uh, constipation, then you can do uh, teachings on public health topics. I did one teaching uh, on the impact of COVID on the, uh, uh, um, on the health of um, children and young people and their healthcare providers. Then uh, you can do QIPs, like I did a patient information leaflet uh, for uh, a GPS in the pregnancy, uh, what to do for that. Then you can do a CPD. There's a, there are courses available, e-learning available for uh, health promotion on uh, RCPCH websites or other, other uh, resources. Domain six is leadership. Uh, it assesses your ability or understanding where you have worked as a leader, a team leader, uh, managing both acute and chronic cases, uh, a critically ill patient, sudden deaths, where you have led a multidisciplinary meetings, uh, your communication with school charities, uh, if you have been uh, involved in uh, service management projects, uh, for example, uh, rota coordinator, if, if you have worked as a rota coordinator or uh, if you have been managing or supervising one uh, year of undergraduate students or if you have been an examiner. So there's a lots you can uh, submit in the uh, leadership uh, domain. So this is an example of uh, ACAT, which I have submitted to my consultant colleague where I have been uh, working as a training consultant uh, on the pediatric ward Monday to Friday with a busy winter shift, uh, managing staffing sickness and bed pressures, patient flu, uh, doing the teaching at the same time and then finishing the shift handing over safely to the next shift. So you can do also, you can ask your consultant 
uh, if you can with uh, you can hold a, a, a consultant bleep for one day and you can act up as a consultant of course with a backup to maintain the patient safety and uh, this is uh, then i linked it to the key capabilities according to the portfolio and then they have given me uh, feedback on this patient safety is also straightforward the evidence uh, it assesses your understanding of uh, uh, the patient's safety, uh, safety of the patients, yourself and your colleagues, um, risk management. So you can, uh, I don't, uh, I didn't sh uh, attach any example here because this, because of the confidentiality issues, but you can give uh, the screenshot of communications uh, with the, your nursing colleagues and or uh, other colleagues, uh, seniors, or you can attach uh, the correspondence or meeting minutes of the RCAs, or if you have activated or uh, reported an incident. So there's a lots of uh, thing you can do. There's also a module, e-learning module on safe prescribing, which you can do. Uh, domain eight. Uh, yeah, domain eight is uh, quality improvement. So, as indicated by the name, uh, all your governance things, your sk governance skills, uh, which you can prove by the audits you have done, the reports, uh, presentation, or if you have revised any trust guidelines or any um, uh, um, presentation of the meetings. So. Um, this is my folder of uh, the audits. I have done uh, quite a few audits and I've also revised a trust guideline for neonatal sepsis. Uh, and I've been involved in data collection for a few audits as well as a team. So the guide, previous guidance said, uh, said that uh, uh, you need to be a lead in at least one of the projects. I don't know if still stands correct or not. Um, Domain nine is safeguarding again. Uh, so uh, one mandatory thing is that you need to have a valid certificate in the level three child protection, which is very easy uh, to get. I think it's 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 a uh, it's a mandatory thing for your uh, uh, mandatory training for to work in a trust as well. Then you need to give good evidence of your uh, safeguarding skills, uh, both uh, if you have participating, if you are starting a referral, initiating or if you are assessing the patient yourself, or if you are writing a safeguarding report, uh, then you can do a safeguarding CPD. Uh, uh, there are peer review meetings every week in almost every department, and you can get the minutes of that if you are attending. You can write logs on that. So this is an example, uh, a doc example of uh, one of the uh, safeguarding CBD, which I have done, uh, which I've sent a report, safeguarding report to my uh, assessor, a, a colleague who have uh, given his uh, feedback to me. And this is uh, the fo my folder in which I have done uh, CBDs. Um, so I've done uh, quite a few, four or five uh, CBDs uh, and a uh, few reports as well, which I cannot show here because of the confidentiality issues. So uh, try to cover all the basic um, aspects of the maltreatment, physical abuse, neglect, uh, if possible, sexual abuse, fabric, FII, all these things. Uh, don't fill up your application only with the reflections. You have to give primary evidence, direct evidence as well. So, you, so develop so logs, developmental logs or reflection is a good piece of evidence, but it's not a direct evidence. So, you have to give a mix of uh, reflection, learning, uh, uh, developmental logs, and as well as a direct evidence. For example, a letter or a report or an workplace assessment. So uh, that is also important. Then uh, uh, domain 10, again, straightforward education and training. I'm sure all of us uh, do teaching and training in our trust, uh, both for juniors, for colleagues. Uh, I have also been involved in maintaining the teaching rota for two, three years. You can do that. You, um, 
give upload the ppt files of your presentations i convert them into pdf uh, give take a feedback from your uh, team if you have not already taken you can do a cpd uh, like train the trainer then you can use um, uh, uh if you ha have assessed a colleague a junior doctor then you can write in uh that is all that will also comes in education and training uh then uh, uh as examples i will show you so this uh, is a uh, feedback i have taken after doing a teaching on mrcpch clinical exam i did a webinar so this is a i just take a few of screenshots which is a long feedback and then another teaching in the department. So you can take the feedback on the Google Forms or Survey Monkeys, uh, or you can take on paper as well. So feedback from the your team is very important as an evidence. You cannot just give the PPT of your uh, presentations. And this is an example of a CBD assessment I have done for one of the junior doctor who was a pediatric trainee. So see how I have redacted or uh, anonymized their name here, here, here. Uh, so it was for a grand round which they presented and I uh, provided a feedback for that. So that will come in, that CBD will come in domain 10 uh, for education and training. And then the domain 11, which is research. So most of us are not very, uh, we don't have enough evidence for research, but don't worry, whatever you have, uh, you can use that and um, you can use your publications of your research or any posters on any regional or national or local presentations which you have done. So basically you have to give the evidence of understanding of evidence-based medicine. Uh, or the journal clubs, if you're organizing in your department or if you're doing any uh, critical appraisal of an article. Or, so this is a, a CPD you can do in introduction to good clinical practice. Uh, and this is my folder of the research where I did a few posters. Uh, I took part in the recovery trials and I was in charge of a journal club uh, and I did a critical appraisal for an article. Then uh, if we talk about the referees. Uh, uh, so, you know, you need four referees and one of them should be your primary referee. The guidance says he should, he or she should be a clinical director, a medical director or head of department if it is outside UK, I mean, or equivalent position. Um, you have, they have to provide structure reports for you. So the structure report format is available on the website. So be very familiar to them because you have to show to them, talk to them before you ask them to write a report for you uh, and choose them carefully. They should know you because the, they have to write a thorough report for you. It's not just a non-specific experience certificate that you have worked in this department from this state to this state. It should it usually explains all your skills, communication, team working, leadership, blah, blah, blah. So uh, choose a referee who knows everything about you and take uh, obtain their approval. And it's a good idea to share your CV with them uh, before you send so that they already know you. Now, verification is, uh, I think, is the last uh, step in your application. So again, uh, you have to choose one verifier. Uh, if I'm not wrong, if you, ha you have to choose one verifier per workplace you have worked in. Uh, there are verified performers available on the website. You can download them. It's a very clear guidance for applicant as well as verify. So you have to complete one performer per workplace. So if you, for example, if you have worked at four places, for four hospitals, you have need to fill four performers. So fill this performance. It's very straightforward. Write your name, your details, and part three is that you have to write your evidence, uh, title of your file, what format is PDF, PPT, doc, date of the document, and total number of pages. So show all this evidence to your verifier before he signs this performance. So you don't need to sign each and origin. So that is also a very common question. Uh, by most of uh, uh, the candidates. So you don't need to get signed the each and every document. You only need to get signed one performer, but 
on each performer, you have to write all the evidence which need to be verified and along with the total number of pages and the format. Uh, because once you submit your application along with the signed performer, the GMC will write to your verified and they will ask them to verify if this is true. So this is the uh, next pages. So you write uh, details of all your evidence, whatever you have. You don't need to have everything, medical reports, case history, refrigerator, patient list. So for e against each of the, this, you will write where did you achieve it, what type of file it is, what are the dates and what are the total number of pages. And at the end, your uh, verifier will sign, put his details, job title, GMC number if applicable, and they'll write, say, sign and put a date. Then uh, your uh, what happens, the GMC will be contacting all these verifiers and they will be asking them if this evidence which you have submitted is true. Uh, and they will share all your files uh, with them. So there is some evidence which does not need to be verified. Uh, and uh, for example, your CV or the certificates, which uh, are uh, CPD certificates, which are already valid, your publications. So these these things are uh, does not need to be verified. So I think uh, that's it, I think. Um, all right, so uh, in summary, the take home messages, although it's a very complex process, but uh, all what you need is a commitment. Uh, you need to be dedicated and you need to be organized. Uh, I don't think it will be uh, difficult if you if you if, if you uh, go that way. The the total time uh, it took for me is uh, three years and a few months. Uh, from the start to the end. Thank you very much and uh, all the best to you and welcome to all your questions now. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lakas. Um, that's perfect as well for timing. Um, so we've got five minutes to go through some questions that have come up and we've tried to answer a couple of things directly in the chat that are yeah. more simple, but um, the ones that are a bit more complex so they benefit from having your kind of insights. Um, and then anything that we don't know the answer to, we'll find out and we'll send it out in an FAQ. So uh, one of them, it's a bit simple and it's a kind of a generic question, but I don't, I wasn't sure the answer. Someone was asking for a safeguarding level three, does it need to be face to face? This is not really a Caesar specific, but. Um, no, no, does it oh, no, no. It, hmm. yeah, it, ha it does not have to be a face to face one. You just need a level three safeguarding uh, certificate, which is valid when you submit your application. And most of the trusts they do that uh, in their ESR, in the, in the e-learning thing on their, um, uh, learning portal. Yeah, and there's an e-learning for health. There's a free one that's available yes. if you've got an NHS email. You can put that in the, I'll, I'll try and put that in the chat if I have time, if people don't know about that. Um, so for the other questions, um, Farah is here. I think she must be quite, you must be quite far in your application, I think, because she had a, quite a few questions. Um, yes. One of them was about um, cross-referencing to avoid duplication. And someone else also asked, please, can you explain how to cross-link and cross-reference? So sort of two questions around the same. I know that you have touched on it, but I wonder if you could yeah. give like, a work. Okay, so that, that, sure. Yeah, so that's why I say you start your application and don't worry about the expiry. You can always pause your application. Even if it is expired, you can start a new and copy and paste from the previous one. So, and you don't have to pay. So when you start your application and start uploading your evidence, uh, after every domain, there is a box, there is a summary which asks uh, any further comments. So when you write that I have uh, uploaded evidence for this, 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 and this, but uh, uh, this letter or this file, I also want to cross link to domain, uh, that particular domain. So uh, I, as you, for example, if you have written a safeguarding report, so uh, which you are using it for domain nine, you can do so that also giving evidence of communication to other agencies and other professionals. So you can write that I'm using this um, uh, file or this evidence for domain two as well. So you can only do that because most of the domains 
well not most of the domains some of the domains they uh, they overlap so you can uh, do that uh, a, a little bit of that but don't overdo it so it's not like you you know cross link in every each and every domain and uh, uh, just keep uh, uh, you know uh, you forget the the main thing so try uh, to keep it uh, to the minimum but still they acknowledges they acknowledge the assessors acknowledge that the some of the domains overlap and it, that the same happens in when you do it uh, in the work based assessment in your portfolio as well in in kaizen as well so it, it's just a summary box which you will use to write that i want to use this evidence to cross link to the other domain hope that answers um yeah i think so um and then another question, like quite separate, but um, also I think I think useful just to highlight. So from Amanda, she's asking if things are anonymized, how do your evidence verifiers, how are they then able to verify your evidence if they can't look up like the patient that you're referring to because you've had to redact it? Like uh, any advice? Yeah. Yeah, so you don't need to, so the assessor don't need to see the name or details of the patient um, to assess your skill, the particular skill which you are giving evidence against. So one thing is that, and the other thing is that uh, you will take the performer before you upload your, uh, submit your application, you will uh, take the performer with all the all the evidence which will go to that particular verifier you will show all this evidence to that particular verifier and then he it's up to him or her if they sign the your performer without seeing the actual evidence or they have to look at so my verifier when i showed this to him the, so they looked each and every thing, or including the number of pages which they were signing so two things one is that they don't need they don't need to know the details and the other thing is that you, before submitting your application, you will take the physical evidence to your uh, verifier. Hope that answers the question. Um, and we do have time at the end if if the answers haven't been clear, you know, or you yeah. need a bit more information if you put those messages into the chat. So just a yeah. couple more minutes before we move on to the next speaker, who probably will go over some of the same material a little bit and give a chance for you know, your questions to be answered um, from a slightly different perspective of the subspeciality application. Um, so uh, just uh, what some one more that I thought may be worth to share with people. Um, so a few people have asked in the group, is there a specific list of skills in PEDS, neonates and community? So for your general PEDS Caesar, where do you go to get the list of skills that you need to evidence for from yes. areas? Yes, so, so everything is available in the guidance. Uh, so, the SSG? SSG, yeah, so everything is available. I will, uh, if you have not seen you this is the first thing you need to do before you start your work so ssg is very important each and everything is uh, available there uh, nadia i can send you a link if you can share it um if you WhatsApp, uh, put it into the yeah chat. I'll, I'll watch I'll, I'll whatsapp put it into the chat or I'll yes okay okay great and then just two quick ones and then we'll move um to the next speaker um yeah publications where would you which domain would they go in evidence oh, is my so guess. that this is very straightforward we'll go to uh, the research domain domain 11 yeah, sorry it's called research yeah. okay yeah. so that's answer for you farah and um how would you best suggestion to evidence your uh, managing a rota or being a rota coordinator would you just put a copy of the rota in that you managed or so i um took us so i managed the middle grade rota for uh, two years almost and you can get a certificate from your uh, clinical director who can write that dr vakas has managed the registrar rota from this date to this date and uh, he has managed uh, during so we are thankful to his uh, rota management skills during the pandemic or difficult times or winter season or whatever. Uh, so basically they are assessing, you are giving them evidence of management skill and leadership skills. And you can also write if you, I think in most of the trust, um, and it's not an easy job, a rota, rota coordination. So you may have meetings with your colleagues as well or email communication. So do take screenshots of that and that can be used as a piece of evidence as well in your management skills. For for example, if you have arranged a uh, meeting with your colleagues to discuss the uh, 
rota particularly in the period of uh, staffing uh, you know gaps and sh mm -hmm. uh, sicknesses and all that yeah. so that can be used as a management skill as well so screenshots of the emails but ideally i think it's probably always nice to get a, some supervisor yeah, get a certificate 